that recovery is stupendous. Achievable. Hope. Freedom. 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 Empowering. It's unique to everyone. It's a journey, not a destination. Getting a new lease on life. Finding restoration after you fall down. Recovery is having the freedom to enjoy life. For me, it was finding a way to really love myself. My recovery is possible in part because of my own sense of purpose. Welcome to Montana's Peer Network Podcast. I'm Jim Haney, Executive Director of Montana's Peer Network. And I'm Alex Schweer. I am the Project Director at Montana's Peer Network. So welcome to another podcast and thanks for tuning in. This is, uh, we're getting to the end of April here. Springtime is upon us. Kind of. Kind of, yeah. We had a weird day just the other day. We had a beautiful weather in the morning. It was like in the 60s, sunny and warm and then snow come the afternoon with a bunch of wind and uh, looked more like winter outside, didn't it? It's it's worrying me that it's going to be one of those years. Do you remember the year it snowed on the 4th of July? I don't, but I have heard those stories. That's like kind of a legend. Uh, I know here in Livingston, every year at the parade, everybody talks about that year. And, uh, <laughs> that was before my time. But yeah, I do remember a few uh, summers where it never really did get warm. And it just sort of stayed rather wet and cool and yeah kind of feels feels that way being we're the end of april i was thinking the other day I, usually by now i'm uh getting lots of flowers um around my yard and i i've got some uh tulips starting to pop up but not much happening really not too much happening and by now i'm usually getting some some flowers and so yeah it's getting later and later and later in the year and yeah yep and it's it's weird it's warm one day and then the next day it's cold or snowing or raining or yeah 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 Yeah. usually we get some warm spells in between here in between the the snow and the rain and you know that kind of that's like springtime in the rockies thing but usually we get some warmer weather in between those storms where we haven't been we've been stuck in a Weird pattern. March, April, April rut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I did notice, uh, you know, I was out hiking um, on Sunday and uh, the hills, the south facing hills are starting to green. I did notice that. And so that's encouraging. But the other hills are still brown or snow covered. And on the plus side, it means you know. fire season isn't going to be as bad this year. Yeah. We've got a lot of moisture, so <clears throat> yeah, that's yeah. always good. Yeah. Yeah, the mountains seem like they have uh, have lots of snow. In fact, uh, you were just up in the mountains, weren't you, the other day? Yeah. Um, I was at Bridger Ski Resort for their last weekend um, of the season. They'd opened an extra weekend. and Nice. Oh, man. It was – it dumped snow. It was 20 inches of snow, but it was thick and heavy. heavy. yeah. And you'd, you miscalculate a turn just a little bit and you're flat on your face. So, yeah. 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 The wet, heavy snow doesn't bode well for uh, snowshoeing either. Um, You just sink and you get really wet. And so um, snowshoeing is is done too, because you just, you need that kind of powdery snow and colder temperatures. And so, yeah, snowshoeing is done once it gets wet and heavy and It's only good for making snowmen. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been a really different uh, kind of spring. um, And hopefully we'll get some warmer weather coming up here and get uh, the grass turning green and flowers blooming and some sun. Yeah. We need some sun. We do need some sun. I'm starting to feel it. I'm like, you know, just, yeah. uh, yeah, yeah. Too much winter, too much gray skies. I'm tired. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I I, uh, say... I've felt it been more sort of depressed and more down, just not the sunny days um, happening here, just more cloudy, gloomy, rainy, misty kind of. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully as we head into into May, hopefully we'll get get some sun and 
Sure hope so. Me too. <laughs> Me too. We need it. We need it. So this month on the podcast, yeah. we've got trauma awareness, right? So um, we've got Teresa, who's MPN's recovery coach. She uh, she created the Become Trauma Aware training. She was one of the lead creators of that. Um, and so she's going to come on the podcast later and just discuss her personal experience in recognizing and addressing her own trauma. Um, so yeah, that's coming up a little bit later in the podcast. But first, let's let's start off with what's going on at MPN. Yeah, so, uh, uh, well, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, which always means uh, we have a busy month. There's always lots of things happening. Um, and so uh, we're doing uh, Peer Support 101, uh, May 21st through 26th in Browning. And for those of you who are interested in peer, more Peer Support 101, we'll throw in the July training which is in Bozeman, July 16th through the 20th. But then I want to bring you back to May, right? Because Mental Health Awareness Month. So um, uh, May 3rd, we'll be in Miles City uh, doing uh, MPN in the recovery movement, talking about peer support. And that's at Holy Rosary Healthcare, 2600 uh, Wilson Street, Miles City. Um, That starts at 10 a.m. That's open to the public. And we'll be out there talking about the recovery movement, what that looks like, Uh, some new peer support programs happening in eastern Montana. We'll talk about some national stuff um, and certification, of course, I'm sure will come up. Then uh, in uh, May 18th, uh, Helena will be at the uh, Center for Mental Health, um, 2 p.m. And that one's going to be on uh, advanced psychiatric directives. So if you're in the Helena area and you want to know more about uh, advanced directives, uh, come on out to that. Of course, that's free. It's open to the public. Uh, Center for Mental Health, 2 p.m. on April 18th. Yeah. Wait, May 18th. Uh, Sorry, did I say April? Uh, May. May 18th. We're talking about (laughs) May. We've already passed April 18th. Sorry about that. Um, And yeah, Mental Health Awareness Month. So we'll have lots of stuff on social media. Andy will be... uh, be sending out lots of stuff on social media for May mental health awareness month, uh, lots of positive message messaging. And then, um, do you want to talk about the, the last one there, the behavioral health, uh, Oh yeah. So, um, if you've gone through one of the PS 101 trainings, you've already received in the mail from us a membership application for the behavioral health peer support specialist membership. So this isn't the same as certification. These are two different things. But if you become a BHPSS member through MPN, there's lots of different benefits we offer through that. So yeah, get on signed up for that. Um, It's on our website. If you did PS 101, you already got, you know, the letter in the mail. So we, yeah, we'd love to have you be a part of that membership. Yeah. And you can always visit our website um, and you can learn more, but you know, some of the benefits of that membership, you know, it's a paid membership. uh, It's an annual membership, um, you know, for people who are going to be behavioral health peer support specialists, um, you know, representation on the board of behavioral health, um, uh, specialized uh, recovery conference workshop, you know, a CEU um, access to, we're, we're rolling out a mentoring program for, um, peer supporters. And, you know, these are, these are benefits that are above and beyond just the standard membership with MPN. So anybody can sign up. It's still free to be, um, just a regular member for MPN. This is really for, uh, the certified behavioral health peer support specialists. Um, it's $55 a year. It's well worth its value. Um, and the big one, I I think when I look at the, all the benefits on here, I think the big one is really the the job postings. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are a paid member, if you're getting this membership, you get all of the job postings that we know about in the state of Montana for peer supporters. So we post those up on there and get those out to you. So yeah, please, uh, please join up and become yeah. a part of that. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're, I'll, I'll put one more little plug in here. If you are an employer of peer supporters and you have job openings, you can send that to us and we're sending that out to this exclusive list. So in other words, we've narrowed the pool down 
of people um, because these are folks that have been through training that, you know, either are or are in the process of becoming certified peer support specialists. And so, um, you know, if you have a job opening, that's the group you want your ad going to. Yeah. So definitely let us know. Um, another thing on our store, so you can buy the membership on our store, Yes. but also we got lanyards. We do. And you know, it's been years now I've had requests from people. Um, I will name one, Jennifer. Uh, <laughs> Jennifer has been bugging me for years about getting MPN lanyards and uh, it's it's happened now. So They say recovery is possible on them. Yeah, blue and, blue and white. Yep, got our colors. They're the breakaway ones. So they got the clip on the back and uh, the lanyard piece on the front to hang your keys or ID badge. Um, and if you're like me, you have 10 million keys on your keychain. I think my keys with my MPN lanyard now weighs like 10 pounds and it, the, the lanyard has not broken under the weight. So. Nice. Very nice. That's good to hear. <laughs> so uh, they're four bucks. They're on our, uh, in our store on the website. So if you want to get yourself a lanyard, you can do that um, and show your uh, pride in uh, recovery and Montana's peer network. So. Yeah. Yep. You know, the other thing that I want to talk about with spring really quick, Jim, is hmm. I've been holding this in while we're talking. I fe- I keep feeling like I have to sneeze. Allergy season is coming. Oh, you have spring allergies. <laughs> yeah. So if I sneeze during oh. the podcast, okay, it's the spring weather coming oh. around. I Just myself don't have spring allergies. I have a fall allergy, so I don't get it in the spring. I'm, I'm good in the spring, but man, in the fall, that's a different story. I'm May, June, sometimes into July, usually hmm. not. But I heard oh. the pollen, I heard it was starting to go up, the pollen numbers, yeah. Yeah, so if I sneeze, guys, you know why. Right. Um, and we were talking, too, about with this, this weird weather that's been going on, how it's getting cloudy, and then we have a few sunny days in there, but it hasn't been super sunny. You know, depression and just, you know, how this weather affects your emotions. Right. I've been, I've definitely been feeling it this month. So I downloaded a recovery tool on my phone and it's called the virtual hope box. Um, and I've been playing around with it. I really like it. Um, it received the 2014 department of defense innovation award, um, in supporting behavioral health in service members and military families. But I'm going to tell you, I think this app is, regardless of whether you're a service member or not, it is awesome. It You log into it and it has these four categories on it. The first one is called Distract Me. And so you can play Sudoku, um, I think Solitaire's on there, um, a few different options. Inspire Me has inspiring quotes. So you click on it, say you don't like that quote, press the back button, click it again. You get new quotes every time, which is really cool. Um, relax me, which does breathing exercises and meditations. And it's really cool because you can set it up to do the breathing however you want to do it. Mm. So if you like breathing in for seven seconds, holding for three and letting out for five, you nice. set that as your, you know, what you want to do. And then the last section it has is coping tools, which is where you pick a problem area for yourself identify the symptoms of knowing that that problem area is, you know, arising. Mm-hmm. And then you put your coping skills in there. Hmm. So super cool app. Um, would Sounds definitely like it. recommend it. It's super easy to use. Um, just got really good ideas in there. How do you find this uh, virtual hope box? So I have an Android and you can definitely download it on any Android by going into your play store. Um, and I think it's available on iPhones as well on iTunes. Okay. And no cost? No cost. This one's totally free. Hey, we love those. We love those. No cost. Virtual Hope Box app. It sounds great. It actually sounds very robust. Yeah, it's got a lot going on. I like how they separated it into the into the categories. So nice. That's very nice. One. Cool. All right. So that's your recovery tool of the month. Virtual Hope Box app. Yep. And uh, as we said, we got our interview with Teresa Galt. She is an MPN recovery coach. Um, And as I said before, you know, she helped us in creating this become trauma aware training. And it's just been really cool seeing her journey um, in, Mm -hmm. you know, from taking trauma trainings to then being able to build one with us and using her experience um, 
in these trainings. So you're going to hear from her. She's, she does an awesome job with, she does detention center groups, um, here in Gallatin County. She does community groups. Um, and she helps us out with, you know, all, all of our membership stuff. So getting members inputted and whatnot. So, yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, uh, Alex and Teresa, take it away. one of the recovery coaches at Montana's Peer Network. Teresa, thanks for coming on the show. Well, thank you for asking me, Alex. So you first did a tra- trauma training with Montana's Peer Network, right? Was that your first introduction to trauma awareness and trauma trainings? Yes. And what did you feel like was the most impactful part of the training for you? The most impactful part of my that first trauma training was just learning what trauma looked like in my own life. I never applied the word trauma to anything that has ever happened to me until after that training or during the training. It uh, connected a lot of pieces for me. Okay. Just in self-awareness. Yeah, that's a big impact we see in the trauma trainings is people kind of having an aha moment about how trauma has impacted their life and what trauma is. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Um, You also then created a trauma training for Montana's Peer Network called Become Trauma Aware. Teresa's dancing over here as I say it. (laughs) What did you think were the most important pieces in that training that you included in there? Um, To be able to define trauma and to uh, label those pieces of life that were... um, that had long-term effects on us. Um, Cause that I developed the training from my own personal experience, what became important to me from that original training. So um, to recognize trauma in my own life. So I knew the value of that in others' lives too, to include that. And also to include a few tools to help us um, accept that the trauma, the feelings that come with it, the, um, uh, the way we're affected by it. Sure. And you said that you use, you know, your own experiences when you're teaching that trauma training, Mm -hmm. what are some of the, the trauma experiences that you share, um, in the classroom? One of the tools that we included in, in the training is um, a little method called RAIN to recognize uh, our emotions, the experience, to accept it, to investigate it, and to not let it define us. And I I didn't know anything about that right there uh, before this experience, before my own personal experience with that method. Um, One day, my husband walked into the bathroom singing a song and so I start singing and dancing with him and, uh, and then something smacked me in my chest and I just became full of fear. And I, I realized that it was the song it, that it was James Brown. Um, and I have been in recovery almost 14 years now. So I felt that I was in a safe enough place to, to stop and look at that because it has happened throughout my life. And never knowing why, I just ran, ran from it and ignored it and redirected my attention. So that t- that morning, I stopped. I literally stopped and took some deep breaths and felt what I was feeling, what that song brought on. And um, I could feel it in my chest. And uh, um, and then I, I accepted that feeling and allowed myself to feel it. And then I investigated it. I, I visualized what images brought up, you know, once I um, looked internally. And um, and what I saw was, was myself at 12 years old. Um, I had run away from home and this guy 
forced me into prostitution in the streets of California. And, um, and I was resistant and he had, we were in a pool hall and he beat me in front of all these people and drug me across the floor. And a James Brown song was on the jukebox. And it was almost like a, a little light went on. And, um, and since then I have just known a sense of uh, freedom from that piece, that little part of me that has stayed dark for all those years shedding some light on it, accepting that. And, um, yeah, I'm free. <laughs> Every yeah. time you tell that story, it, it gets me. <laughs> it's, yeah. Mm. It's that ability, you know, as part of not only being trauma aware, but growing through the trauma is being able to, to look mm. back and recognize it and see, what was upsetting you and why, and really be able, like you said, to investigate it um, because you can't grow past it without that. Mm -hmm. So that's so important. And, you know, I hear people say sometimes like, well, why do you want to stay stuck in the past? Like, mm -hmm. why are you thinking about all these past things? Well, in order to move past them, you really do need to think about them and be able to, you know, fully comprehend the situation and why it affects you before it stops affecting you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So in last month's podcast uh, on resiliency, we talked about a term called post-traumatic growth. So we kind of just discussed this in the last topic as well, but how do you think you've grown from your trauma and challenges in life? How has that helped you grow? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, well, when I walked into recovery, um, willing and open-minded and determined to learn how to li live life differently. Um, I was a complete mess. Uh, I was just broken, full of self-hatred and, um, self, um, self-doubt and, um, just feeling worthless. And I had a baby at that time, eight months old, and she gave me this sense of purpose to want to change because she's going to be watching me learning from me. And I want to be a good example. I wasn't at the time. And, uh, just, um, learning who I am, learning what has happened to me and knowing that those things don't define me. Um, have once I free myself from, um, that self-loathing and um, the effects that trauma causes. It's like, I can be a regular person. <laughs> I can sit here and talk to you and not be afraid to look you in the eye and, and know that we're connecting. Cause I, I never felt that before. I just remember like sitting in early recovery, if someone would touch me and it would like almost burn me just because I didn't know how to accept a human connection. Right. So I, now I can give big, nice hugs. <laughs> Which you do. Yes. <laughs> and mean it and want to deliver something in that hug, love and compassion. Yes. I, I, that, I think that's the greatest thing that I have grown to know is love. That's beautiful. <laughs> Um, when you teach the trainings that you do and you share these stories, what does it feel like being able to share that? It feels like those things, uh, my experiences have a sense of purpose now that they mean something by my being able to share and maybe encourage someone else, um, to seek healing. Yeah. What would you say to someone who felt like their trauma was too deep that they can't heal from it, that they're, they're stuck? I can get that. Too. I get that too, because I, I mean, I, I was there. I'm going to say if we keep chipping away and at, keep chipping away at it, keep, um, reaching for something better, something that does heal, that makes us feel good, that doesn't hurt us anymore, that we're going to find our way to it. It's, it's just going to happen. 
there's always something in there to reach for. Right? Yeah. It's always something. Because I wasn't looking to heal from the James Brown song. Right. Yeah. It came to me. Mm -hmm. And I've heard this concept too, which I think is really true. And it kind of resonates in that story for me as well, is that you can't heal. You can't work on those, those things until you're ready and you're open to it. Like mm -hmm. if you're not open to it, you're still going to get that pain, that chest feeling of tightness and mm -hmm. knowing something's wrong, but your mind isn't going to let you yeah. enter into that place to figure out why, if you're not open to it and, and ready for it. Right. So. Right. If we don't pay attention. Yeah. Because before I, I would feel it and I would not pay attention. Right. Yep. But if we take the time to recognize it, accept it, investigate it, not let it define us, that's the huge one, I think. Right. And I mean, not judge yourself for those experiences. You know, yeah. those aren't a reflection on you. Yeah. Right. You are still who you are today, mm -hmm. even looking back on that past. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I used to consider myself a victim or, or just even less than human, just putting myself in those situations to be harmed. Um, but now I consider myself a survivor and a, a warrior because a lot of people don't survive things like that. Yeah. And you mm -hmm. are, mm -hmm. you are a warrior. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Teresa, for coming on and being on the podcast. I think your story will resonate with a lot of people and you, you give a lot of hope and inspiration. So thanks for coming on. Thank you, Alex. So what a great interview there. Thank you so much, Teresa, for uh, taking the time and, and putting yourself out there and sharing with our listeners. Yeah, it's always great having having MPN staff on and being able to talk to Teresa is always a, a good time. So, <laughs> all right, off we go into the last segment. It's uh, it's the Alex quizzes gym time. So all right, play hope, along hope with it's us. Better than the movie at home. One. Yeah, I think I have a feeling Jim's gonna do better at this. These are trauma facts versus if you tuned in last month, I quizzed him on movies and not my forte. What did you? I think you got a one out of four. Yeah, not my thing. We'll work on it. <laughs> all right, trauma, trauma facts. Okay. So. Most traumas are caused human to human. They're caused by people. What's an exception to that? Oh, well, that would be uh, natural disasters, hurricanes, floods, tornadoes, those kinds of things. Mudslides. California had a mudslide not long ago, right? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Because most traumas are caused person to person. But yeah, this is an yeah. example of it's not, yes. it's not human human caused. All right. You know, you're already up to your score from, from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> one for one. <laughs> the movie game last month. All one right. For one. This one's a little harder. According to SAMHSA. So, um, what percentage of adults do you think have experienced a trauma at some point in their lives? Oh, that number is pretty high. So is this a percentage or like mm -hmm. a one in something? It's a per I mean, if you give me a, a how many out of 10, I'll take it too. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say 85%. Oh, little high, close, but high, 70. 70, oh, So okay. 70% of people have, been, have uh, ex or adults, I should say, have experienced a trauma at some That's point in their lives. pretty good. So almost like three out of four, almost. Yeah. yeah, yep. It's crazy. All right. According to the Bureau of Veteran Affairs, are men or women more likely to experience PTSD? Uh, according to the VA. Mm -hmm. So according to the VA, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with... Well, my gut says one thing, but it's the VA. So I'm going to say the VA says women are more likely 
to experience PTSD. You're yeah, that that's exactly right. I thought this was really interesting. Yeah, my gut my gut would say men, because if you think of the military, there's more men than women, just by population. Right. Right. But I, I think, yeah, if I if you when you qualify it by saying the VA, I would say, yeah, I'm gonna go, yeah, women. I wonder with this one too, if it's just that women are more likely to go for a prof- to go to a professional it. for help or to sure. report it or to get a diagnosis. Sure. sure, it might be more, yeah, yeah. With you know more it's more trackable, it's more yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Next question on trauma. What is the ACE study? Well, that's Adverse Childhood Experiences study uh, that was done in the late 90s with, I think, what is it, 17,000 people were studied and they found a correlation between early uh, adverse, what they call adverse childhood experiences. So early childhood experiences that are traumatic and a direct correlation between uh, health problems, health issues um, later in life and ranging from heart disease to mental health issues, drug problems, diabetes, it kind of ranges the whole spectrum, I, I believe. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you're, you're three for four yeah. right now. Yeah. Got yeah. One. That's a big, you know, that's a big one. And hopefully most of our listeners have heard of ACE, you know, the ACE study or, you know, Hopefully and if you haven't, have. check it out, look it up yeah. online, read about it. Yeah. Look up ACEs. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cause that's a big, that's a landmark study. So. Yep. All right. Last question. What percentage of participants in the ACE study of those 17,000 do you think had at least one ACE score? Oh, so wow. at least one adverse childhood experience. Out of the seventeen thousand, mm-hmm. so just as a percentage, I would say ninety-seven percent. Oh, so high! Sixty-four <laughs> percent. Sixty-four. Wow, I wasn't had at even least close. one ace. I wasn't even close. Sixty-four percent. So a little more than half. All yeah. right, I'll I'll give you the okay. point. No, that if you one. Get this I'm one. way off. On, I'm way off on that one. What about people who have over four? What percentage have over four? have over four. So if 64% had at least one, how many had at least four? So, um, well, let's see. Uh, I'll go with 16%. Oh, so close on that one. So close. 12.4%. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking of uh, some other numbers, some other mental health related numbers. So serious mental illness kind of numbers. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So 64% Sixty-four percent have at least one adverse childhood experience, and twelve point four have over four. There's hmm. ten total that you can that can yeah. be scored. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So that's our monthly podcast on trauma, trauma awareness. Hope you learned something. Yeah. Let and us know if you beat Jim in the quiz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and tune in. Uh, tune in next month. Next month. Uh, As we said earlier, it's Mental Health Awareness Month, so that's what we're going to be talking about next month, uh, the webinar and social media, and then, of course, the podcast. We hope you tune in. Yeah, love to have you. So thanks again for tuning in to this month's. Yeah, and have a good spring. (laughs) Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works. Recovery is possible. Recovery is possible. (laughs) Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery is possible.